The internet is full of bro signs, fake knowledge, half information or propaganda. Your quest of reliable, authentic health information ends here. So subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon and you never have to go anywhere else ever again. Hello everyone, how are you today? I am Dr. Paramjeet and you're watching Dr. Education. This is your channel. Here we give you all authentic and verified, simplified medical explanations about the most common healthcare topics from verified US National Medical Library. And today we are going to talk about hernia. Hernia is one of the most common problems seen uh, in adult life as well as in children. Very commonly, these people go for surgeries without knowing what caused the problem, what is the problem. So let's talk something about hernia. Hernia is a sac basically formed by the lining of the abdominal cavity. That's the most common site of hernia, uh, abdominal cavity, which is also called, the lining is also called peritoneum. So abdominal cavity or abdomen has peritoneum as a lining and this lining becomes, uh, comes out, the lining, this basically it becomes a sac coming through a hole or a weak area in the strong layers of the belly, of the wall of your abdomen, right, that surrounds uh, the muscle, right. So this layer of the abdomen which is surrounding a muscle is called fascia. Fascia is a fibrous layer. So there can be a hole a weakness or a, a little bifurcation from where the internal peritoneum can actually bulge out, the sac can come out, right? This type of hernia, uh, there can be many types of this hernia and this hernia depends upon where it is, right? It can be down below your uh, femoral area, just above your thighs, uh, femoral area there will be a bulge in the upper thigh just below the groin and this type is more common in women as compared to men hiatal hernia hiatal hiatus hernia which you've seen it occurs in the upper part of the stomach and part of that upper stomach actually pushes from the diaphragm into the chest that's why these people have gastroesophageal reflux problem hiatus hernia problem there can be something called as incisional hernia. Say you have had an operation, uh, abdominal surgery and because of that incision, the fascia or the muscles have become weak and from that weak part, if the stitches are not done properly or sometimes if you stretch or cuff during the healing time, it, because of that increased pressure, that fascia can separate and it can lead to a sac formation of your peritoneum coming through that sac outside and it causes a hernia. It basically you can say it, it is through a scar if you have had abdominal surgery in the past. All right. Then incisional, uh, that's incisional, then umbilical hernia. Umbilical hernia is the bulge which is around the belly button, right? It occurs when the muscles around the belly button, they does not close completely after the birth. So that is a congenital type of problem. Then there is something called inguinal hernia, which is also very common. This is a bulge in the groin region, proper groin. The, below the groin is femoral, proper groin is inguinal hernia. It is more common in men and it actually may all the way go down into the scrotum. Yes, it can go, there is an inguinal canal. So it can go through the canal into the scrotum or uh, there are two types of inguinal hernia, direct and indirect. Indirect, it actually pierces the canal from uh, middle and indirect, it goes uh, properly from the uh, canal, right? So that is what hernias, types of hernias are. Then what is the cause basically, right? Obviously, the cause is weakness in this abdominal covering areas, the fascias and muscles, sometimes because of surgery, sometimes because of incision, sometimes congenital, sometimes because of lifestyle problems, like sometimes because of uh, heavy lifting, increased pressure can lead to, you know, hernia, straining while you are passing your stools, while toilet, 
toileting you can actually have increased intra-abdominal pressure because of which you can have hernia or any kind of activity that actually increases the pressure inside the abdomen right pushing or anything right so those can actually lead to hernia if you have weakness there anywhere right so hernias can also be present from birth right but the bulge may not be evident until sometime later in life so it's possible that you have a hole inside the abdomen but it might bulge later later when you start lifting heavy weights so that's also possible so some people have uh, this kind of issue some people even have a family history of hernia right there also some genetic factor is also there then babies and children can also get hernias and it happens when there is some weakness in the belly wall obviously i've told you that inguinal hernias are common in young boys right some children children actually do not have uh, any problem uh, until they are adults sometimes this happens and uh, any problem any activity which you do which you feel increases the hernia or it leads to any discomfort or pain you should actually uh, talk to your doctor and there are certain activities which actually lead to increased problems like if uh, chronic coughing sneezing coughing and sneezing increases the abdominal uh, pressure then long-term chronic constipation right pushing hard during bowel movements right then there are and there is enlarged prostrate problem which actually increase, which leads to straining in urination if you have a lot of weight then you are carrying a lot of pressure in the abdomen and ex carrying extra weight is just like lifting extra weight right that much weight you are carrying on your head on your body then if you have a lot of fluid inside the abdomen ascites if you have cystic fibrosis connective tissue disorders from congenital this is connective tissue disorder basically if you have poor nutrition if you smoke then also you increase your chances of hernia peritoneal dialysis you know when you actually do dialysis it's a type of dialysis where you actually put uh, take out f uh, fluid from the peritoneum and replace it some uh, from the other side peritoneal dialysis is also done then uh, exertion over exertion can also increase your chances and even undescended testes if because of some reason your testicles are not descended then also you have chances of hernia so if you do have hernia usually you might have no symptoms and some people may have some discomfort or pain but this discomfort may worsen only when you are straining or maybe sometimes standing or lifting heavy objects right but in time most common complaint is basically just a bump a bump or that is little sore or is growing sometimes in the uh, umbilical sometimes growing sometimes below the groin that is the areas where hernias occur and the typical thing is when you touch it it actually bulges when you're coughing right so when a hernia gets bigger it may get stuck inside that hole also right this is a problem and if it gets stuck inside that hole cannot come back then it can actually lose its blood supply this part can lose its blood supply and this is called strangulation kind of a hanging of that part right strangulation this causes a extreme pain at the site of strangulation this will also lead to sometimes nausea vomiting and not being able to even pass gas or have any stool movement this will lead to an emergency and you will need a surgery urgent surgery will be needed right away right strangulation hernia you know uh, hernia which cannot be retracted or strangulated hernia has to be ruled out okay so how can you do that how how can you rule out how do you examine what are the tests right your doctor can provide uh, a lot of uh, simple tests can actually see and feel a hernia when you come to them and just by doing that just by asking you to cuff right bend or push or lift something if that hernia actually gets bigger then it's a hernia right it's basically cuff test cuff reflex whatever you say then uh, this bulge may not be easily seen if it is in children or infants except when the child is crying or coughing right 
also uh, sometimes nothing else is needed sometimes you can do an ultrasound or a ct scan just to look for hernias also uh, right that also done then if there is a blockage in the bowels if there is a blockage in the bowel then an x-ray of the abdomen will be likely will be done to see if there is you know if there is any blockage then treatment how do you treat it hernia only treatment is surgery surgery is the only treatment which can permanently fix a hernia because it's basically an opening it's a broken window it's something broke broken thing a broken shirt has to be stitched right you cannot apply anything else it has to be stitched a broken part a weak spot has to be uh, surgically corrected right so surgery may be uh, sometimes more risky in some people with serious medical conditions but surgical repairs basically they aim they are aimed to uh, repair the weakened abdominal wall tissue the fascia and close any holes which are already there and most hernias are very easily closed with stitches and sometimes we have to put a mesh over the stitch 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 it and then put a mesh over it just to be sure that doesn't that it does not recover reoccur reoccur okay so and uh, in an in the case of uh, umbilical hernia which actually does not heal on its own uh, uh, if it is a child then we, we can actually wait till the time till the child is 5 years old and if it does not recover uh, uh, it does not repair by itself then we have to uh, do the surgery in that case also in outcome is very nice don't worry it's very good surgery is a small surgery rarely the surg after surgery is hernia will come back very very rarely that's very rare incisional hernia on the other hand are very likely to return if already incision has happened stitches were made and it came back then it might come back again because it might be because of some chronic problem some very weak abdominal wall right then incisional hernia is only which comes back nothing uh, others don't actually come back then in rare cases inguinal hernia repair can actually damage some uh, in function structures involving the functions of the testicles right so it's very rare but surgery is very uh, you know safe but rarely some complications can happen so another risk of surgery is nerve damage which can actually lead to numbness in the groin area and uh, sometimes if there is a bowel part which is trapped strangulated hernia is there then the bowel then the uh, intestine can actually get perforated or the bowel may die inside the strangulation and then at that point the bowel has to be removed part of bowel have to be removed and sutured again so that can be the complicated hernia situation right so if you have a painful hernia or a swelling which just really uh, reacts to coughing bulges and comes back again if you have nausea vomiting painful hernias anything like a red purple dark discolored hernia it's an that can be strangulated right just go to a surgeon let them examine and they will let you know whether it is a hernia or not so a big question comes how can you prevent hernia can you prevent hernia yes you can number 1 use proper lifting techniques lose weight if you are overweight you have to lose weight that will help a lot because weight a lot of weight will actually loosen your tissues right then you have to control or relieve avoid constipation right you have to avoid constipation by eating a lot of fiber drinking a lot of water going to the bathroom as soon as you have the urge and exercising regularly i have made a different video on constipation don't forget to watch that and as in case of men they should see their doctor if they start straining uh, with urination for an enlarged prostate and they should get that problem solved as soon as possible so this is all about hernia which you need to know or which uh, which, is, which is there to be told so hope this is uh, this information was good hope you like the video if you did then don't forget to share this video and give me a big thumbs up it feels really awesome to have the um, number of likes all right i am dr paramjit you are watching dr education stay connected stay healthy